Hi there, and welcome back to Gay Chill Crafts. My name is Sarah, and this is a part two of a multi-part series that I'm calling Sheep to Sweater, and it's an, a long-term project um, that I've just started to go from wool uh, that we've raised uh, with our own sheep, and then take it all the way through uh, cleaning and preparation and spinning into uh, yarn for a sweater that I'm uh, going to knit for myself. So this is the second uh, episode, um, and it's the first of two, at least two videos on washing, possibly three. Um, we'll see how this goes. But um, I washed a fleece for the first time last week. Um, it was a fleece from one of our sheep and learned some things from that, but I've also been doing some follow-up research after washing um, and have a couple of other washing techniques that I want to try and compare and contrast. So um, there won't just be one video on washing uh, for this series, there'll be a couple of videos. If you missed last week, you can, you can look at the skirting video that talks about what to do with the wool as soon as it comes off the sheep to get it ready for washing. And I did allude to some steps in washing um, in that video, but today I'm going to um, talk about that in a bit more detail. Your washing technique is not only going to depend on the resources and the kind of space that you have to work in for your washing process, it's also going to depend on the kind of fleece that you're working with, the breed of sheep um, or other fiber animal that you're working with and preparing. Um, and for this first one, I have this fleece, this is the cleaned fleece, um, and this is from a sheep that is primarily a Shetland. Um, this is Dory, but she's also crossbred with a little bit of Dorset. Um, if you look in her uh, family tree, so to speak, um, she only has one ancestor that's Dorset, so she has very little of that bloodline, um, but her body shape and her face and her feet are all very dorsity, and I, I kind of feel like her fleece might be a little bit more dorsity than her bloodline would um, would indicate. But um, so she's she's not a purebred Shetland, and definitely has some kind of mixed characteristics. Um, so you know that's been interesting. Um, but that's the fleece I'm going to talk about today, and that's the fleece that I washed um, with, with the the pre preliminary washing process. Um, a couple of things before we get into my specific experience um, in terms of the science and the chemistry of fleeces and, and washing them. Um, so as we talked about last week, the raw fleece off of a sheep has a bunch of uh, contaminants or, or things mixed in with it or on it that we're trying to get rid of when we do our washing. So it has uh, dirt, it has manure from the sheep, um, it may have a little bit of urine in it, um, it has suint, um, which is sheep sweat, and it's, it's a similar kind of secretion that, that we make when we sweat. And then it also has lanolin, um, which is not like anything that, that we or any other mammal makes. Um, lanolin is specific to sheep. And lanolin is a waxy substance. Um, I've been doing more research, and lanolin is is often referred to as a grease. Um, you, hear, you hear terms like grease fleece, which is raw fleece or unwashed fleece, or spinning in the grease, um, which means that you're spinning with some of the lanolin still in the wool. Um, but grease is really kind of a misnomer. Um, lanolin is harder, uh, typically, at room temperature. It's, it's stiffer at room temperature than an oil would be, it's not fluid. And um, when you shear a sheep, or when you have a sheep shorn, you can actually see um, kind of globs, globules of lanolin in the underside of their fleece where their fleece is touching their skin. So as that uh, fleece is coming off the sheep, it's being sort of peeled off as the shearer goes by with their blades, you can see that the waxy deposits there. And what this means is that when you're washing a fleece with hot water, what you're really trying to do is melt that wax. Um, it's, it's a different kind of a process than um, trying to dissolve it with a detergent or break it up with a detergent. You really need the heat 
to melt the wax um, to get it separated from the fiber. Um, the other thing is that you want to use a detergent and not a soap for washing your fleece if you're going to use the hot water plus detergent method. Um, detergent is stronger than soap. Um, detergent does not react with uh, things in your water like minerals. Um, it doesn't create soap scum and detergent does a better job of keeping uh, things like lanolin and suint and dirt suspended in the dirty water so that they don't resettle back onto the wool and contaminate it when you're trying to pull the wool out of the hot water um, or, or rinse it. So detergent is going to be much more effective than soap for washing process. And so uh, if at any point in this, uh, the rest of this video, I, I slip up and I substitute the word soap, just know that I'm really talking about using a detergent and not a soap for the washing process. So as I mentioned, lanolin is a waxy substance and it needs to be melted. If you're going to use a hot water washing method, you want the water hot enough that it actually melts the lanolin and breaks it up into the water um, so that you don't have these gobs of fat or like a sticky residue that's going to resettle back onto the wool. And the melting of point of lanolin is around 107 degrees Fahrenheit. So the water has to be uncomfortably hot in order to be effective for the washing process. Um, most, I think uh, mo in most places in the U.S. at least, um, there is a, a regulation that says that your um, domestic hot water can't be too hot um, to prevent scalding, um, part particularly in public places that have public restrooms. You're not allowed to set your hot water above, I think, 110 degrees Fahrenheit or something, something along those lines. And that's to prevent people from getting scalded when they wash their hands. But on the other side, you don't want your, your water temperature to be too low, but for um, health reasons, you can get bacteria growing in your hot water heater, but also for effectiveness in order to um, remove dirt and germs and things from yourself or whatever you happen to be washing. So um, you should measure the temperature that's coming out of the tap of your um, system if you're if you're washing fleeces at home you should measure the temperature that's coming out of the tap because you may have your hot water uh, heater set to either the wrong temperature for washing um, or you might find that you have a lot of temperature loss if uh, for example if you live in a larger home and the hot water has to travel a long distance through pipes before it gets from the hot water heater to the tap and you can have a lot of heat loss that way. So make sure that your water is hot enough and um, if it's not hot enough you might want to artificially heat the water before you start washing. Um, so I, uh, I do have access to hot water that um, comes right out of the hot water heater pretty warm and I would say it's probably around 110, 112 degrees Fahrenheit so it's a few degrees over that melting point. Um, however, the water does also cool down quickly and so um, having a way to either keep the water hot through insulation or something in your, in your container where you're washing the wool or starting off with a hotter temperature so that if you do have some heat loss, it's not going to cool down so much that it's no longer able to melt the lanolin off of the fleece. Um, something, a situation where you have hot enough water that you can keep hot um, is important in the washing process. So let me walk you through what I did um, for my for my first um, kind of test of this. And I would say this is relatively effective, but I'll talk about some things I'm going to try in future. Um, so I have uh, in a utility room, um, not in my kitchen uh, where I where I do food preparation and not in uh, the laundry area which is also where Rick brews beer and uses a sink there. Um, so you want to wash, you know, you are dealing with manure, bacteria, dirt. You you want to be careful if your, your sink um, is something that you're going to use to soak your fleece in and then you also use that sink for other things, especially if you use it for food prep. Um, you want to be really careful that you clean your sink extra thoroughly after you wash a fleece or preferably you use some other vessel or sink if you have access to that. So I have this utility room. We use it for um, 
prepping fleece for dyeing wool and that kind of thing. So it's a sink that's not used for food preparation and the water there is pretty warm. So um, the sink is uh, long and shallow. So what I did was I filled it up with hot water. I added my detergent. I dissolved the detergent in the water and then I laid my fleece um, into the water and uh, let it rest for about 20 minutes. Um, then I came back and lifted that fleece out of the water. Uh, I did not have the fleece in any kind of um, bag or anything like that, so I just used my hands and kind of used a gentle scooping motion to lift the fleece up out of the water and place it in a bucket temporarily. And then once I had gathered all of the, the fibers out of the water, I drained that. I refilled the sink with hot water. I added a small amount of detergent for a second wash, put the fleece back in, let it soak again for another about 10 minutes or so, lifted that out, and then I rinsed the fleece in hot water a couple of times to get the remaining uh, oils and soap or, or detergent um, out of that water. Um, I then brought the fleece to a place where I could spin it out um, outside. Uh, now you can use um, something like a, a washing machine that has a spin only cycle. If you have one, you can use, um, some people will keep their old washer if it, if it sort of breaks down and stops washing clothes effectively, but the spin cycle still works. I know a lot of um, people who do a fair amount of fiber prep and they'll have a special machine set aside just for um, uh, spinning out wet fibers or wet yarns. Um, so use that if you have it. You can also get like an old manual crank uh, spinner. You can even use an old something like a salad spinner or food prep spinner, again, that you're not going to use for food prep. Um, but you can put small amounts of wet fleece in there and, uh, and spin it out and spin out the excess water. And that's just going to help your fibers dry faster. It's going to cut down on the risk of um, having fiber that molds or has some other kind of uh, problem because it's sat wet for too long. Um, I don't have any of those things, so what I like to do is manually spin my uh, fiber outside. And I do that using an old um, onion skin, or sorry, an onion bag, um, a big plastic bag. Uh, it's like a mesh bag. Um, and you can probably find these at your local grocery store. Just ask in the produce department if they have extra onion bags that you can have. They probably just give them to you. Um, so spin those out outside to remove the excess water and then lay your fleece out in a place where it can dry thoroughly. Um, you want to make sure that when you lay it out, you're laying it on some kind of a surface that can allow free circulation of air. And what I used was my skirting table, um, which I described in the skirting video. So you can go back and look at that if you haven't seen it. Um, but the skirting table is dirty. And so what I did is put a clean piece of cloth over the skirting table to protect the fleece from dirt and then laid the um, fleece, the washed fleece out on top of that. And it dried in about three days in my basement, um, which is pretty good. My basement's not, you know, terribly musty. We do run a dehumidifier down there as needed. And so the fleece was able to dry um, pretty effectively. So that's a quick overview of the wash process. Now I did mention using detergent in the wash and what I used was a combination of a laundry soap uh, or a laundry detergent as well as a dishwashing detergent. Um, I've read and, and um, you know looked at some other videos since then and I think a lot of people just use the dishwashing detergent but the laundry detergent um, has some different properties than the dishwashing detergent. And from my understanding, they kind of work in tandem and have different strengths. So when you are washing your fleece, um, the, laundry, the laundry detergent kind of cleans in one way and the dish detergent cleans in another way. So they work well together if you use a mixture of those. Um, for a around a two and a half to three pound raw fleece that had been well skirted, I used four uh, tablespoons of dish detergent and two tablespoons of powdered laundry detergent, so it's very concentrated, um, as my initial wash. And then I used half that amount as my second wash um, because the wash water was still really dirty. And I could tell that there was still a lot of um, oil and dirt and things uh, and lanolin still on the wool. You can actually reach in and you know pick out a piece and feel it with your bare hands. Um, be careful not to burn yourself on the hot water. 
um, but just give it a feel and if it feels you know sort of gummy and sticky then you know you need to to wash the wool again to get all of the lanolin off um, now I laid my fleece out um, as I said to dry and then I came back the next day to kind of check on it and I noticed it was still kind of a beige color it wasn't a bright white um, Dory is a, a white sheep uh, I noticed there were still some dirty tips um, and what I mean by that is um, the ends of the fleeces uh, the ends of the fleece the individual fibers still looked rather dirty you can kind of see an example here um, and sometimes that can be from staining, but often that means you haven't gotten all of the grease and the dirt off of the fleece. Um, and I also use my nose. Now I use, I made the mistake of using a scented dish detergent this time. I'm not going to do that in the future. So it, at first sniff, it kind of smelled like the, the dish detergent scent, but there was definitely like a barnyard funk underneath that smell. Um, if you have a good sense of smell, you should be able to smell this pretty clearly. If you don't have a great sense of smell, then, you know, it can be a little bit hard to tell, but I could tell it still smelled sheepy. And so I decided to go back the next day and rewash the fleece a third time. And sure enough, when I put, uh, when I took the fleece out of the hot, uh, wash water on the second day, the wa the water was beige, you know, it was a, it wasn't dark brown, but it definitely had a yellow, yellowy brown, scummy look to it. And so I could tell that there had still been um, some manure, some dirt, some lanolin left after my first day of washing. So then I rinsed it um, two more times after that. And that seemed to really um, change the wool, make it a bright white, and get the last of that dirt out of there. Now the other thing that rewashing the fleece did also... Um, was it felted it a bit um, and it, it looks worse than it is um, but you can see that this looks like a blob of fiber it doesn't look like an individual lock and you know this kind of happened to the whole fleece I'll, I'll put some video in here so um, you can it's not it's not so felted that you're gonna have a hard time getting it apart I think just a little light combing on this fleece is gonna be fine it's gonna open it right back up um, but I did overwork it a little bit. I did overwash it. Now, when you're washing, it's really important um, not to agitate your your uh, wool in the water, not to move it around in the water at all. Um, and that can be really hard to... It, it can be very um, tempting to move the fleece around in the water, even just a little bit, even just to kind of poke it down there, push it into the hot water, or, um, you know, just kind of make sure it's all in the hot water. You end up kind of moving it around a little bit, but you want to do that as little as possible because the, the, there's three elements that turn wool from um, individual fibers into felt. And they are heat, moisture, and agitation. And so when you're washing, you're adding heat and you're adding moisture. So you really have to be careful not to add agitation, otherwise you will get a felted fleece. Um, fine wools tend to felt more readily than long wools. Or, um, and then primitive breeds can be pretty fun, prone to felting um, depending on what they are. Um, Dorset uh, does not felt readily, but Shetland I would say is probably an average felter. So with this Dorset Shetland cross fleece, um, you know, there was definitely some danger that I could, I could felt it if I was too aggressive with the washing process. Um, I think it was a bit more forgiving than my fin sheep uh, fleeces are going to be. So that's one of the reasons that I started with this fleece as my first um, test to wash because even though it does look felted, it will still come apart uh, pretty easily. And I also wasn't going to cry over this if I did end up felting it and ruining it. Um, obviously, I don't want to be wasteful with my sheep's fleeces, but as in terms of ranking the fleeces, and, and just this is just based on my own preference and my plans for what I'm going to do with the wool, um, I wasn't going to be too upset if I felted this um, in in my efforts as a beginning uh, fleece washer um, 
you know, it would be okay if I had to compost this. But I'm glad I didn't because I actually want to um, try spinning this up and seeing if I can make some nice soft yarn out of it um, because that's kind of another side project. So maybe we should call this sheep to sock and sheep to sweater. <laughs> um, so, uh, but just back on the washing process, you do want to make sure that you're only soaking the fleece and you're not moving it around in the water too much. When you go to gather your fleece out of the wash water, you want to be able to lift it up in one smooth motion if you can. And so having it inside of some kind of a mesh bag that is heat resistant and will still allow um, particles of dirt and everything to fall out of the fleece and fall into the bottom of your wash basin, um, while still being able to gather up the fleece quickly and smoothly um, is, is a good tip. And so what I did on my second day, rather than just having the individual fibers um, in, the, in the wash water, I actually put them all into an onion skin or an onion bag. I keep calling them onion skin bags. Uh, onion bag and putting the whole bag into the wash water. And that allowed me to lift the fleece out of the wash water at once. Um, I think the other thing that I, I learned from this process is not to overcrowd your wash vessel. Uh, you really want to make sure that all of the fleece gets exposed to as much detergent and hot water as possible and that the detergent and the hot water mix can kind of penetrate into the fleece from, uh, from, the, from the sides and the edges of the, of the blob of fleece that you're washing. And if you have too much wool crowded into your wash vessel, the penetration and um, melting action of the hot water is not going to be as effective and you're going to end up with a lot of dirty fleece kind of in the middle of your ball of fleece that you're washing. So um, that was something else that I learned from this process is not to try to wash an entire fleece in this particular sink that I have because it's just too small to hold, you know, two to three pounds of fleece. It, it would be better to wash like a pound at a time. Um, obviously, if you want to wash more fleece, you can get a larger vessel. You could do this in an old bathtub or something like that. Um, I would say that I did okay on this first experiment. Um, I think that's particularly with going back to the second day and rewashing the fleece because that definitely did get out a lot of the um, manure and, and grime that was still on the fleece. And, you know, it is pretty clean. Um, you're going to see some darker areas here just because there is a fair amount of very fine, um, very fine uh, vegetable matter, which I can show you. Maybe you can see that on the end of my finger. But that's like teeny tiny pieces of hay and little bits of um, now clean uh, debris. So this is all clean, but it's, it's still stuff that's in the fleece. So when I prep this for spinning, I'm hoping that a lot of that little stuff, um, and even just uh, playing with it here in front of the camera, a lot of this debris is falling out on the table. So that's a good sign too, um, that this isn't so felted that um, I can't just fluff it up with my hands and then allow a lot of that debris to fall out and have an even cleaner fleece ready to, to prep for spinning. Um, a couple of things that I forgot to mention that I wanted to make sure to point out. So I mentioned that, um, one of my regrets in this first experiment of washing was that I used a scented dish soap. And that was just because I had that on hand from another, um, project. But the scent is, they, they add a fair amount of perfume, um, to dish soaps. And that can really mask the, the natural odor of the wool and it can make it, difficult to identify by smell whether your wool is really clean or not. Um, so that's one of the things. The other thing you want to make sure of is that the detergents that you're using don't mention an enzyme, um, like enzyme fighting power or enzyme stain fighter or anything like that. These enzymes um, will react with proteins and this wool is mostly protein. So the enzymes will actually kind of eat the wool and weaken it and make it make the texture weird um, and can really degrade the wool quality over time. So you want to make sure that you're not using any kind of a detergent, whether it's a laundry soap or um, 
a, a dishwashing uh, detergent, you want to make sure that you're not using anything with like any kind of like stain fighting power or enzyme boost or anything like that. Um, read the read the labels carefully before you choose which detergent you're going to use uh, for washing your fleeces or any animal fiber. Um, yeah, I I would say I'm fairly happy. I mean, as a as a complete beginner, um, this first time around, I'm pretty happy. I feel like there's st there may still be some dirt on some of these tips, and I can't tell. And I'm not experienced to know. Like this tip here is kind of yellow. Is that is that dirt, or is that stain from dirt? Um, wool will stain, and. You know, it's just, it's difficult to tell exactly what's caused that discoloration. So I'm going to try some other methods and we'll see um, how we do in terms of removing dirt effectively. Um, the other thing is that detergent is not the best for the environment. Um, both the manufacturer of the detergent and then disposing of the wastewater can have really uh, detrimental environmental impacts, especially on waterways. And so in trying to cut down on detergent use for washing fleeces, um, I've read about a couple of methods that I want to try. And I'll just mention them here briefly and then I'll let you know uh, in more detail how these methods worked. So the first one um, is a cold water rinse and it's, it's basically soaking the fleece in cold water for several uh, hours or overnight before you try the hot water wash. And it is just soaking in plain water um, with nothing added to it. And what this allows is, um, especially if you have a lot of dirt, you know, in the tips or even in the whole fleece itself, um, but matted areas or matted tips where you have a lot of dirt kind of caked in there, um, the cold water rinse just allows that to hydrate. It allows the locks to kind of poof up um, as they hydrate and separate. And then a lot of the dirt and oils will naturally kind of seep out of the fleece. They'll fall down out of the fleece and into the bottom of your washing vessel or your bucket. And then when you lift the fleece out, you're going to leave behind a lot of the, especially the solids, you know, the grit, the pieces of soil, um, some of the hay, bits of hay, a lot of that stuff will just fall right out of the fleece into the wash basin and, and then you're going to be able to use a lot less detergent when you go to wash your fleece. Um, I think this method is also more effective because if you wash, if you add detergent to something that's incredibly dirty, um, you, you, you have to have the right ratio of detergent to the thing you're washing. Otherwise, what happens is the detergent kind of gets bombarded with too much dirt and then it can't react with the dirt that's um, really stuck onto the wool, if that makes sense. It's kind of like there's a dirt barrier and the detergent will only work through that dirt barrier to a certain degree and won't actually be able to penetrate and get all of the dirt off or all of the grease or oil or wax off of the fibers. So... Um, I think the cold water soak is really good because it's, you know, it's a nice, it's a gentle passive way to start the washing process. Um, it's effective from what I've read um, of, of getting, you know, maybe, maybe 50% or more of the dirt off of the fibers without having to use detergent. And then that way you can use less detergent and the detergent you do use is going to be more effective when you go to your hot water uh, wash the next day. And I learned about the cold water soak uh, method um, from a woman named Carrie. She runs Serenity Farms, um, and that's located in the Lower Peninsula of Michigan. Um, she raises Corydale and Finn sheep, and she has, um, she's on Instagram, and we uh, interact there. Um, but Carrie also has a a YouTube channel called My Wool Mitten, and I'll link to that uh, below this video so you can watch her videos. And um, the episode's called Finally Fleeces, Washing a Bit of Wool, and then Fiber Prep Summer Camp were especially um, informative for me and might be helpful to you. Um, 
the finally fleeces episode she talks a lot about skirting and actually demonstrates um skirting um and that wasn't something that i was really set up to do was like give a demonstration of skirting so that would be a good one to watch uh, as a supplement to my last video and then the washing a bit of wool and the fiber prep summer camp videos talk about this cold water soak and um show how effective the cold water soak really is so seeing uh carrie demonstrate that and thank you for sharing that um really convinced me to try this cold water soak method um i i do get a bit impatient sometimes and it can be you know if you have a four or five hour block of time you just want to like go get the thing done and be on you know have your have your wash fleece on the drying rack um in as short a time as possible but as I found out in this last uh, this last weekend when I tried this, you know, that's not always effective. Um, I ended up trying to dry a dirty fleece and had to rewash it all over again. So being in a rush um, sometimes means <laughs> that you either don't get the result you want and or you're going to have to do it over again anyway. So, um, you know, just being patient and, and following the steps uh, is really important. And I want to thank Carrie for, for demonstrating that in her videos on her channel. So again, that's my wool mitten, and you can check her out. Um, the other method that I want to try is a, a fermented suet soak. Um, and suet is sheep sweat. Um, it is different from the, what they produce as lanolin. It's a different kind of a substance. And like our own sweat, uh, sheep suet has salt in it from their sweat, the sweating process. And so the salt combined with the um, natural oils and lanolin in a sheep's fleece can kind of create a natural detergent or soap. And so the idea with this process is it's a very passive process. Um, you take a dirty fleece, you lay it in a tub, you keep that uh, uh, a tub of uh, room temperature water, and you keep that tub at room temperature for a week or two and allow that to ferment you allow the suet and the oils to mix together to make this natural soap and what this should do is remove all of the dirt all of the manure and some of the oils and lanolin and then you might have some lanolin left over onto the wool and at that point you could decide if you want to wash uh wash the wool with a little bit of detergent or not but it's it's taking that cold water process and really pushing it to um, a further uh, process of fermentation, which will break down a lot of the dirts and oils on the fleece. At least that's my understanding of it. So I want to try this suet method because um, in theory, if you don't have a heavy lanolin fleece, if you have um, something like Shetland uh, or Romney or Porter Luster, a, a long wool fleece that has a low lanolin content, you wouldn't even have to use any detergent at all. And again, that's going to be a better um, environmental uh, way to do a, a fleece wash, a fleece cleaning. So I'm really excited to try this. Um, now the caveat is that it's now November in Vermont. We have very cold temperatures outside. So I'm going to have to keep my, um, my suet vat inside. It's going to smell bad and I have to keep it at a, at a good temperature. I can't get, let it get too cold. So I'm going to try to figure all that out, but I will let you know how um, both my cold water wash as well as my, um, or my I say, should say my cold water pre-rinse and then the uh, fermented suet soaking method, um, how that all turns out and kind of give a review of these different uh, washing methods and see which ones I like best. Um, I have some dirty Romney fleeces that I think will work well in the suet method. And then I also have my two fin fleeces, which are a much finer wool um, than the Shetland, and they're probably going to be uh, more prone to felting. So that's another reason I want to try the fin fleeces um, in some of these other methods where there's less, um, less, of, less handling, I guess, uh, less soaking, less uh, numbers of wash cycles. Um, and hopefully then less chance for me to felt um, my fin sheet fleeces in trying to wash them. Um, so thank you for sticking with me. Like I said, um, these other wash processes are going to take some time, and I don't know that I'll have 
uh, another episode on washing for you immediately. Um, but, you know, check back in a few weeks and I should have some more results. In the meantime, we'll have videos on other related topics for you, um, other crafts that we're working on here at Gay Chill Crafts. And so um, I think that's all I have for you this week, but do have a great week. Um, let me know, again, if you have any tips for fiber prep, any of the stages that we're talking about. I'd love to hear um, your input on this. And especially if you wash fleece regularly, um, what are your favorite methods for doing that? How do you avoid felting? Um, if you have favorite kinds of detergents that you like to use or other kinds of methods uh, to, to clean fleece, let me know what you like to do. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next week. Cheers.